f distribution if we have the two population and we want to compare the standard deviations of these two population so this can be done by using f distribution so we have population 1 sigma 1 is the standard deviation of population 1 sigma 2 is the standard deviation of population 2 and our perception is whether these two standard deviations are same or not these two population standard deviations are unknown and we want to compare the equality of these two population standard deviation the h not will be what h not is sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 the two population standard deviations are equal in magnitude sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 So we have to select a random sample of size n one from some population one. We have to select a random sample of size n two from population two. Then we have to construct a ratio. Ratio of what? Sample variance one divided by population variance one, and the ratio of sample variance two to the population variance two. This ratio is basically a f variate. So it follows a distribution which is a right skewed distribution. and it has the two degrees of freedom one degree of freedom is n minus 1 and other degree of freedom is n minus 2 this is the graph of f distribution it it starts from zero and goes up to uh, up to infinity here are some basic properties of uh, f curve total area under the f curve is 1 if we integrate uh, the f distribution from 0 to infinity so we will have answer of 1 total area is 1 which is the characteristic found in all of the probability distributions uh, which are continuous uh, f start f has a starting point 0 and goes up to infinity and it has a horizontal asymptote as the s chi square distribution has uh, f curve is a right skewed curve so these are the three very basic characteristics of f distribution now we have to focus on the usage or uh, uses of f distribution uh, two standard deviations can be compared by using f test as in the first slide i state two population standard deviation the equality of two standard deviation can be compared by f test multiple mean can be compared by f test this is called analysis of variance anova so another another use which is a very prominent use of f distribution is anova in anova what we have to do we have to compare the mean of several population whether the several population have the same means or not and lastly we have a confidence interval for the ratio of two population standard deviation suppose first population standard deviation is sigma 1 second is sigma 2 we are interested in the confidence interval of the ratio of these two this confidence confidence interval can also be constructed by using the f distribution f distribution will gives us a probability of the region which is on the right side of a critical point if we have a smaller number like 0.05 or 0.01 or 0.025 the the smaller probabilities if we have a smaller probability then that can be obtained by using f table if we have to to consider a number which is which has a higher probability like uh, if we are interested here this is 0.025 suppose it is 0.025 and we are interested in this point which is the left point this cannot be directly obtained by the f table this is uh, a characteristic of f distribution which is called reciprocal property we can use this property to find out uh, this value of the f curve or f table how how this property this property hold and how can we use this property to find out the uh, any point which is on the left side 
This can be done by using a very simple technique F one minus alpha nu one and nu two first degree of freedom and the second degree of freedom nu one and nu two it is equal to one upon F alpha nu two nu one so you have to reverse the degrees of freedom and take a reciprocal of that we will have a semicolon here and we will have a semicolon here this property is referred to as reciprocal property suppose we are interested in f.95 at the degree of freedom 1020 so this will be equal to 1 upon f 0.05 this number is to be taken from the f table that that number will be the value of the left region this number is basically it is this property is a very important property because f table do not have the left values the left values if we have to uh, construct a critical region which is on the left side then we have to use this property in this slide we have to obtain the f value from the f table so the right value can directly be obtained from the f table f 0.05025 f0.025 with the degrees of freedom 9 and 8 this can be directly obtained by the f table but uh, on the left side we are interested in f 0.975 because we have to input this entire region to the f table so the entire region to the right hand side is 0.975 Point nine seven five with the degrees of freedom nine eight. As we do not have the values of the point nine seven five directly into the table, so we have to use a reciprocal property, and that property is we have to look up zero point zero two five with the degrees of freedom eight and nine. here we have a semicolon here we have a semicolon and these are the two numbers that we have to get from the f table so i am showing you the f table and then we will proceed uh, this is chi square table this is f table f table needs the two degrees of freedom one degree of freedom is dfn n stands for the numerator this is new one degree of freedom of numerator is represented by nu1 and this is dfd degree of freedom in denominator this is represented by nu2 in my previous slide the so nu1 is uh, nu1 was what nu1 was 9 and nu2 was 8 to so 9 and 8 these are the two values that we have to look into the f distribution or the f table we have to look uh, f 0.025 and 8 here we have a sink Nine and eight. This is DFN. Uh, degree of freedom of numerator nine. DFN. This is DFD. The first one will be the degree of freedom of numerator, and the second one is the degree of freedom in the denominator. So, what sample we are using in the 
formula of F statistics. If we are using S2 in numerator and S1 in denominator, then this will be reverses. Now DFN is eight, DFN is eight, eight is here. And the DFD, no, DFN is not eight, DFN is nine. It is nine. This is DFN and DFD is eight, so DFD one, DFD two, DFD three, DFD four. So we have to proceed to the next. Here we have up to eight. On the next page, we have Nine and eight, uh, it is not here. Nine. And eight. It is here. This is column number nine. The DFN is nine in this column and DF, uh, D is eight. Eight is here. And the alpha is 0 0.025, the middle number. So this is the value that we have on the right side, 4.36. Now in second number, we are interested in 0 0.975. F 0 0.975. with the degrees of freedom, nine and eight, it is equal to one upon the F 0 0.025 with the degrees of freedom, eight and nine. So we have to look uh, into the number DFN eight, eight is here in the second last column. And the nine up to nine, eight I have here, a nine will be on the next page. Eight is the DFN, it is. And DFD nine, it is. And we have to look the number 0 0.025. So it is 4.10. So it is equal to one upon 4.10. So these two numbers are to be calculated and these two numbers will be used as a critical point in that uh, slide. 4.36 is the right region and one upon 4.10 is the value of left region. It is 0 0.24, so 0 0.24 and 4.36. These are the two critical points. Critical interval can be, can be written as 0 0.24 up to zero union with the close bracket 4.36 up to infinity with the round bracket because it is infinities are always be open. Now this value can be obtained directly by F table four and 12 because it is the right value. The right values can be obtained directly. So directly you can see this value, it is 4.26. So the critical interval is uh, 3.26 up to infinity. This is the critical interval. Now this is procedure T8. In this procedure, we can test the hypothesis sigma one is equal to sigma two. This is the objective of this procedure T8. Here are the three assumptions. Your samples are random. Both samples are random. Both samples are selected independently. It means the two populations are isolated population. The both population should be normal. So you have to make the two probability plot, one for the sample number one and the other for the sample number two. If the both populations are normal, you can proceed to the F distribution and the estimate hypothesis testing procedure of the two standard deviation can be used. But remaining steps are same. Alpha is to be described. 
it is reduced because in the actual formula it, he, we have sigma 1 here sigma 1 square here and sigma 2 square here that that are cancelled why they are cancelled because if we are interested to test whether the two standard deviation are same or not if they are assumed to be same then this and this will be cancelled out the reduced formula will be s1 square upon s2 square to so try to keep the larger variance in numerator and a smaller variance in denominator the reason is the f statistics have a property that it should be greater than one so if you are placing a smaller standard deviation or the variance in numerator and larger in denominator though you always have a smaller than one so that is a very important characteristic of the f test so if you take s2 uh, in numerator and s1 in denominator then the degree of freedom of S2 will be the DFN and the degree of freedom S of uh, uh, sample one will be in the FD. So that is the adjustment that you should have to focus on before implementing the procedure. Similarly, we have to uh, p-value or the critical region approaches, any one of the approach can be used. And then finally you have to, conclusion is to be taken. Here we have uh, data in the example number 11.14, the data of two standard deviations are to be compared. Vinyl flooring data we have, the covering of brand A and the coverings of brand B, these two data sets are given to you. What is required? Do the data provide sufficient evidence to conclude that? that population standard deviations are equal. So sigma one is equal, sigma two is the objective or the question asked in this problem. This is H naught. And there is no, nothing is said, said about the alternate hypothesis. So you have to take H1, as sigma one is not equal to sigma two. The two standard deviations in population are not same. So what is to be do? You have to construct the two probability plot for brand A and brand B. If the both are straight in nature, then we can have a perception that the both populations are normal from where these two samples are gathered. The samples are selected uh, randomly and these two brands are independently operating. So the samples are independent. This sample is from company A, is for brand B. So these two brands are independent brands. So all the three assumptions are fulfilled if the probability plots are linear. So you can see that the probability plots are linear. We can, we can take the assumption uh, valid we can consider the assumption valid because uh, the two graphs are straight in nature. So the two standard deviations, the two populations are assumed to be normal. Now procedure is to be implemented. The two standard deviations are same with the alternate hypothesis that the two standard deviations are not same. The standard deviations, the strength, tier strength are different. The standard deviation, the tier strength are same alternate hypothesis and null hypothesis. Alpha is 0 0.05 formula, reduced formula is S1 square upon S2 square. And if we calculate the value of the two variances, then the value of F is 0 0.413. This can be reverted by considering the larger variance in numerator and the smaller variance in denominator because the value of F statistics is coming to be less than one. Now in the book, the problem is solved by this value and the critical region is formed. The two values of the critical points are 0 0.25 and 4.30. And the value of F is observed is 0 0.4. The 0 0.4 is here on the right side of 0 0.24. The null hypothesis is true. We can say that the two standard deviations in population are same. The population standard deviation of uh, tier strength differ for the two vinyl floor covering. Uh, not provide, do not provide means the strength are same. 